Luke 12, verse 15. Then he said, Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. And Matthew 6, verses 19 to 21. Don't store up treasures here on earth, where moths eat them and rust destroys them, and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Well, this morning we're continuing in our series called The Rhythms of the Soul. And uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, take this series on today was because, or this, in this series at the beginning of the year, is because we all need a reminder once and again about some of the basic rhythms of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. But also in this time of uncertainty and the way culture is trending and uh, things that are happening online, we need some rhythms of the soul in order to keep us grounded. I asked the question over the last couple of weeks, are you happy with who you're becoming? Are you uh, reacting to the things in this community that are drawing you away from God and away from uh, some of the uh, practices that you used to have? Are you happy with what culture is turning you into? You see, that's what this rhythms, these rhythms of the soul are all about. It's about putting us back on solid footing. And today I want to talk about something that for many of us we really struggle with. And it may seem like a simple thing because it's the practice of simplicity. Simplicity. I'd like to just deconstruct this sentence for a minute. The narrative that we hear in our society is busier is better, more work accomplished is better, it, which leads to a fulfilled life. And maybe we could even just break down this one idea, this narrative that we live in and experience every day, and that is uh, that it's not necessarily that busier is better, but more is better. And maybe you've felt that in your life where you've struggled with, do I just want more? Am I always striving for more? And the message today is about simplicity, about paring down our lives Paring down the things that we own so that they don't control us. You know, John Rockefeller, probably the wealthiest man that ever lived in today's, uh, you know, money and resources, he would be considered a trillionaire. But back in the 20s, he was asked this question. He said, how much money is enough? And John Rockefeller responded, just a little bit more. And I think that we are all wrestling with that sentiment whether it's stuff that we own, whether it's uh, money, stuff, uh, we're all longing for this sense of fulfillment, right? If we can just get a little bit more, then finally I'd feel better. I'd feel more fulfilled. I'd feel like I had achieved or I have arrived. It means sometimes more stuff, more houses, more cars, more investments, more clothing, more technology. But no matter how much stuff we get, there's always this instinct within us, this drive within us for more. Whether it's our new phone, our iPhone, or Android, whether it's the newest gadget, I'm wearing a brand new smartwatch, or it's the trending clothing. Social media will very happily tell us that the clothes that you wear are old fashioned and out of style. Jesus put it this way. He talked exactly the opposite way. He said in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 21, don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroy them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rusts cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be. There, the desires of your heart will be. You know, there's an inner reality and an outer reality when it comes to simplicity. There's simplicity in my heart and in my soul, and there's a way of living that's simplicity, that is simple or simpler than it is now. And it has, le it has more to do with understanding who I am in Christ and how we live in response to that. 
the idea of simplicity is not just about getting rid of stuff. It's about recognizing who we are in Christ. I am no longer a slave to the things that I own. I'm no longer a slave to the debt that I put myself in. I'm no longer a slave to what other people think of me and how I should live my life. I'm set free. You know, we really must understand that the lust for wealth in our contemporary society is psychotic. And I don't use that word very loosely. To be psychotic is, to, is, to, is a break from reality. The lust after wealth and the stuff that we accumulate, whether you are of high income or middle income or lower income, we have this drive for more. Always more. For me, it's achievement. For you, it might be something else. And you know, we've completely lost touch with reality. We crave things that we neither need or enjoy. <laughs> we buy things we do not want to impress people that we don't like, says Arthur G. Gish. You know, we are made to feel ashamed of the clothes we wear by the people who are around us. And we think that we may be out of step with the people across the street. Remember that old phrase, keeping up with the Joneses? Well, it's not about the neighbor across the street. It's the people on my Facebook feed and my Instagram. We keep being pushed for more. And advertisers desperately want your attention. They want to grab your emotional self and say, you are not good enough the way you are. You need more. And Jesus talked about this uh, idea of wanting more, having more, wealth, uh, money, the uh, social justice around the economy. He spoke about it. The Old Testament spoke about it. God spoke about it throughout the scriptures and into the New Testament and the apostles. They all realized that the love of money is the root of evil. He spoke about this subject more than any other subject in the Bible. The Bible talks about in the Old Testament that there is no absolute right to property. For you who think that what you own is yours, you are sadly mistaken because God says everything comes from the hand of God. You may have put your work and your toil into something. You may have saved and put aside. You may have borrowed and bought, but everything comes from God. You have no absolute right to property. The Bible talks about how we are slaves to our attachments and our wealth. Psalm 62 verse 10 says, don't make your living by extortion or put your hope in stealing. And if you're wealthy, and if your wealth increases, don't make it the center of your life. Because where you put your heart where you, is where your treasure is. The 10th commandment talks about stealing, right? And coveting things. All of these things are about, I want more. I want what they have. I want more of what I don't have. These all lead to that idea of stealing and coveting. Jesus frequently said things like, blessed are the poor. Woe to you that are rich. Where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. And then in Luke chapter 12, verse 15, he said this, beware. Guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Would you say that last phrase out loud with me? Life is not measured by how much you own. Life is measured by your relationship with God and your relationship with others. How you reflect your relationship with God with the people that you love. That's what life is about. It's not about what you own. And if Jesus talked about this issue, about social issues like this, when his, in his day, life was comparatively simple compared to ours. If he spoke about it more often than any other subject, don't you think that we should be paying even more attention than they did? It's tough. We are bombarded on all sides 
by advertising and by uh, people telling you that you don't measure up. But if you only had this, if you only were able to go there and visit that place, if you were only able to have this kind of relationship over that one, you would be fulfilled. Whether it's a new iPhone, a new beverage, a new house, new clothing, just fill in the blank, whatever it is. We keep getting sucked into the narrative that more is better. But ultimately, that experience doesn't last, right? You know, when I was, when we were first married, uh, my, I said to my wife, you know, well, after realizing this after a few years, but one of the things that I recognize is that I love to go out to eat because it made me feel important. It made me feel like I was I had enough money to do that, even maybe if I didn't. <laughs> so I, we would go out to eat because it would make me feel better. It would make me feel like that little bit more was going to fulfill some of my need. And when I realized that, it was like, that is such a lie. Because as soon as that food's in my stomach and it's been, it's been, it goes through my body and goes out the other end, what good really has it done to me in the grand scheme of things? That more is actually not better. I don't know about you, but the COVID-15 has kind of grown to the COVID-20. More is not better. You know, there's always going to be another TV with a new gadget. There's always going to be a Black Friday sale. There's always going to be something more that you're looking for. We have stuff everywhere. We've got corners with stuff. We've got boxes with stuff. We've got crates with stuff. We've got garages that we don't use for garages anymore because it's full of stuff. We've got containers where we put our stuff in. Did you know that there's enough room in all of the storage lockers in the United States, the storage places to house every single person that lives in the United States? That's how much stuff we have. Shopping is the number one leisure activity in North America. The number one. And COVID has pushed it even higher because we have been, uh, we have been uh, not allowed to go on those destination vacations or spend money on those vacation items that we would have. And what we've done is we've turned them into shopping opportunities to get more stuff that we really don't need. And that's really trying to fill this space, especially during the difficulty of COVID. We all wanted that little buzz, that little enjoyment of pushing the button that says, I bought this. How many of you, your heart rate kind of gets a little faster when the Amazon delivery guy comes by the house? You all know that rush. But it's only temporary. It's only really short. And the problems begin when you've got to hit the button again and again and again in order to feel better. Matthew 6, verse 33, Jesus is preaching in the Sermon on the Mount. He's talking about possessions. He's talking about all of the things that, (coughs) excuse me, that draw our hearts away from him. And he says at the end of this, but seek first the kingdom of God above all else. And live righteously and he will give you everything that you need. This pursuit of just a little bit more is so insidious. This rhythm of simplicity is about putting this in its right perspective. About uh, addressing the just a little bit more in my life and saying, I can actually do with less and live quite fine. Thank you very much. I can actually be better as a person. Just think of the anxiety and the depression that you felt in your life in the last little while. I guarantee you it's tied to just a little bit more. It's tied to maybe if I had just some more friends or if maybe it's tied to if I just had a better relationship or maybe it's tied to if I just bought another thing on Amazon Or maybe it's tied to, if I just had a little bit more money in the bank. That anxiety and depression, I imagine, is tied to that. So would you like to be free from that? (laughs) Wouldn't you like to be free from that kind of anxiety, that depression that comes from just wanting a little bit more? I would. And it's hard. 
because it's so pervasive in everything that we do. Here's what you've got to do. You've got to recognize these three things. If you want freedom from this anxiety, here's the first thing that you've got to know. Number one is that every single thing comes from God. It is a gift from him. Your work and all your ingenuity, all of your drive, all of your achievements are a gift from God. Everything that you put your hand to, the things that you create, the things that you love, they are all a gift from God. And when we start to see our stuff and our possessions and the people in our life as a gift from God, we stop trying to harbor our control over them and our want for more. We start to reevaluate, God, is this something you want for me? Not something that I'm trying to drive myself happy towards. The second thing is that it's God's business to care for the stuff that we've got. Some of you... Uh, you've, you've stored up so many things. You're like chipmunks. You've got stuff squirreled away everywhere. And it's for someday. It's for eventually when. It's when I'm sure I'm going to need it eventually. God wants to protect your stuff. You don't have to do it. I mean, there's reasonable things that we've got to do, right? God wants you to use the things that you have for his purpose and glory. He will protect them. Put locks on your cars and on your bicycles. Lock the doors at night. That's all important. But when you become obsessed with the safety and security of your stuff, it gets out of control. So first thing, remember, it's a gift from God. Everything is a gift from God. Secondly, he will protect it. He will watch over you. And the third thing is that make your stuff available to other people, especially when you know it's the good and right thing to do. I mean, those are easy things. Somebody comes to you and they're in need. You say, okay, well, I got lots of stuff. You can have some of it. That's the easy part. But make sure that you have such an attachment to your things that you could actually let them go. A friend of ours um, in in Burlington, uh, he came to us uh, and invited us over to his house and uh, one of the things that uh, he said to us is that, well, he says, I, I just got rid of my, uh, my, my, one of my chairs in my living room because somebody else needed it, so you might have to sit on a kitchen stool. I mean, that's the kind of releasing that you want to have with your stuff that you can say, you know what, you can have it. I'm not holding on to it so tightly. And my life is not such that I cannot do without it. So that's the internal stuff, right? That's the internal things. Recognize that it's a gift from God, that God's gonna protect it, and that in gratitude, I have to be willing to let it go. You know what? The only antidote to greed is gratitude. The only antidote to wanting more stuff is being willing to give it away. That's one of the reasons why God wants you to give and to tithe, He says that the evilness of money and wealth will overwhelm you. You will worship one against the other at the expense of the other instead of the other. And it's either God you worship or it's the money in your pocket that you worship. And he knew, he knew this. He knew that the only way that you could break your hold on it was to give it away. That's why God wants you to be generous. Well, then there's the external things. There's some things that we can just practice and do to live a simpler life. One of them is uh, that you buy things for their usefulness rather than for their status, right? Are you purchasing a new watch for status sake or because you need a new watch? Are you purchasing a new car for status sake? Are you purchasing it because you need it? Don't do it to impress others. Cars, bicycles, apartments, TVs, whatever it is. You're having the guys over at your house and 32 inches is just not big enough to watch the hockey game. Reject anything that's producing an addiction in you. That's the second thing. Some of you are going to blush when you think about it. What's that thing that you collect that you would actually be embarrassed to show people? (laughs) Is it shoes? Is it books? DVDs? For me, it's books. I mean, I'm, sometimes I get, you know, uh, I'm proud of the books that I've read, but I look at my collection and think, I got a problem. 
I collect way too many of those things. There's a psychological need and then there's an addiction. It comes in the form of, of money, television, alcohol, chocolate, clothes. Ladies, if you're eating a chocolate, um, um, you know, out of those baking bags, what are they called? Um, chocolate chips out of the baking bag, you've got a problem. That's the thing to kind of blush about. Reject anything that's producing an addiction in you. Develop a habit of giving things away. Just make it a part of your regular day. That you just go through your stuff and you purge some things, giving it to someone who needs it. Some of you, you want to sort and store and you want to dust and then resort and then restore and then redust it. That's a problem. Because it happens over and over and over again and you're just putting more stuff away, hoping that someday you'll get a use for it. Let it go. Don't get caught up in the advertising gimmicks uh, for the best time-saving gadgets. Most of the time, they don't really save much time to begin with. Uh, learn to enjoy things without owning them. You know what? We've got some great public parks and uh, libraries and beaches. You don't need the house with a beachfront property. It's nice to have. Enjoy the things that are already out there. Develop a deeper appreciation for creation. Be wary of the buy now, pay later schemes. That's just slavery right there. If you can't pay for it with your own money, don't. Don't, don't buy it. As much as you can, live a debt-free life because debt is a slave is uh, debt will become your master. You will become a slave to your debt. Here's another thing. Reject anything that breeds oppression in others. You have the option to choose the things that you purchase. You have an option to, to uh, investigate how things are made. You have the responsibility, I believe, as God-fearing people, not to put a group of people or a place or a culture under oppression because of the things that you purchase. And stay away from things that distract you from seeking God. If they become more focused for you, then it's going to be a problem. Jesus' words are that life is not about acquiring more. It's not about more. It's about simplifying your life. It's not about getting that penthouse, that house upon the hill where only 0.001% of the people can actually ever afford anyway. A fulfilled life without the latest iPhone can really happen. It's not about living in poverty, though. It's not about uh, asceticism. It's not about giving up everything uh, like some of the old monks of old and only have the possessions on you that you can carry. God didn't, didn't say that. Jesus didn't say that you had to give up everything, nor did he say that you should uh, pursue uh, uh, buying everything. He said, where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. If it takes the place of God, then it might be worth giving up. But he didn't require us to go into poverty. As a matter of fact, there are some poor people who need more stuff, right? They need more financial resources. They need a place to live. You know, I had a chance this week to be at the refuge and interview uh, Clarence, uh, the executive director, about the story about how they're trying to provide affordable housing. People just don't have enough to pay for just basic needs, and I imagine most of us have multiples of all kinds of things that we could really get rid of. That's probably more true than any of anything else. It's, so here's some practical things. All right, how do we do something very practically? Uh, one of the things that you can do is to practice a rhythm of simplicity. There's probably an area of your life that makes you blush when you think about it. It's a little bit uncomfortable when you think about your collection. And it's probably in a closet. So start with a closet. <laughs> Pare down the stuff in your closet. You really don't need 30 t-shirts. You really don't need 30 pairs of shoes. Simplicity. 
Simplify your closet. Donate, sell, recycle, excess clothes or accessories that no longer are valued and are taking up space in your home. Our moderator today, Ali, is just going to put these things up on your screen. That's, a, that's an entry-level rhythm that you can do. You can, you can start with a closet and, and pare down and give some things away. But there's a baseline rhythm where you go throughout your house and you start doing that. You say, look, I'm, I'm, one day is never going to come. That one day when it's going to be important that I need it, that it's in a box, under the other box, in behind some other things on the bottom of the shelf, is never going to come. And then there's this stretch rhythm. That stretch rhythm is where you move beyond excess and to give away things that may actually hold unhealthy attachments. These are basic rhythms that are going to bring pre peace into your life. And they're going to give you margin. The only way you deal with uh, uh, crisis and conflict and trial in your life well is if you have margin in your life. This act of simplicity of saying, it's everything that I have is a gift from God. God is going to protect it and provide for me what I need and not always what I want. And being generous with, with the things that God has given me are going to bring you peace in your life and restore the rhythms of your soul. Let me pray for you. Lord, I want to thank you for this reminder because I too succumb to this so quickly. Lord, we all need these regular reminders of these rhythms. Thank you, Lord, for this series, for me personally and for all of us today who are watching, that you would remind us of whose hand this all comes from, that you are the God who owns everything. The cows on a thousand hills are all yours. Everything belongs to you. Thank you, God, that we have this great gift that you give to us, life and talents and jobs and money and our resources. Lord, help us to get it right and to put you first and foremost. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.